The STAT ADI is a broad market momentum tool. I want to look through the settings here um, and then show you what makes this indicator useful. Um, the first settings are going to be about uh, working with your data set. Got that? Data set. So you can choose your grouping. So you can do the New York, the exchange based, any of the exchange based ones, or index based. So you could do S&P 500. It'll just look at those 500 stocks in the S&P or the Russell 2000 or something. Then you can choose the correlation. And that I recommend that you Google that if you don't know what it is already. Learn how the, the exchanges collect and calculate this data. Um, and you can pick those. Now, I want you to notice right here, see that? NYSE X and then the C, that's the New York Stock Exchange, and it's composite data set. The, if you wanted to manually search this in Thinkorswim, the symbol is ADD, oops, oh, let me try that again. <laughs> it's AD, that's advanced decline, D for difference, advanced decline difference, and then if you add a C, it's composite, and that's the C. But if you just don't add a C, just ADD is the advanced decline with the primary. Um, a lot of people use the primary, but I think that's because they don't know about the composite. It's just a personal preference. You use the one that you think is the most useful. So that's the data set this oscillation is being calculated off of, is the one that you have input right here, not this one. So that'll make sense in a minute here. The second here is our primary plot. The primary plot's the one that controls the range. So there's a secondary plot, which you can plot in the background. So the primary is going to be true to the, to the scaling. The secondary is going to be scaled to fit the background. So the secondary won't line up with the, um, the range label here. It'll, it'll be fit into the background so you can compare them. Um, and down here there are some auxiliary things, uh, the labels. Um, you can change if you have overnight values or you want uh, minimalist things. You can, there's a little marker right here. If you forget which one's primary controlling the range and which one's secondary scale to range, there's a little marker to distinguish. The summation of visual A, which is primary, A, primary. Um, you can change the coloration. Summation B, so the background scaled one, you can change the coloration a little bit. And then there's a stat advanced decline marker, which we'll look at a little bit later. Now, that's some of the settings, but it's important to know what this indicator can do. Um, because in my opinion, it's what gives it a lot of the power. So this is a 30-minute uh, chart plotting 30-minute data. Well, oftentimes you want to look at 30-minute calculations, but you don't want a 30-minute chart. So you can plot that 30-minute data. Did you see that? See, this is uh, 144, 43, and you flip over 144, 43, but this is a one-minute chart. So these little, this is that the 30-minute calculation. That's this section right here. You see that? That's this. So you can get the 30 minute values plotted onto a one minute chart. And what's important here, let me scale this spot where it's a little more obvious, is that in between each, you see how it's a little wobbly almost looking? It's not destroying the data in between. So there's, this is a 30 minute, so there's 30 bars, 30 bars in between here and here, and it's saving the data points of uh, of the McClellan value that's being plotted. And it does this for all of them, all, but it's only on the primary. So it'll, it, non-data destruction. Does that make sense? So we're looking at a 30 minute calculation, which is like that, on a one minute chart. And it does it very well. Um, so that's the first feature, is this has really great uh, MTF, multi time frame, and then you could tack a P on there for plotting uh, because it's plotting one time frame onto another. Does that make sense? Uh, if that doesn't make sense, shoot me a message. This is really important that you understand. Um, so, if 
you're doing that and you have these artifacts, which is this. You see these these drop. These are artifacts because every 30 minutes the new data set technically comes out. Um, what you can do to make it a little prettier, so we have the oscillator selected. You can pick any of these values. Um, you can smooth it. Now this is a type of smoothing that I call phase uh, phase smoothing. And what it does is it smooths it out again without destroying the data because it's important that you retain that data so you can see what it actually looks like um, through time. So you can see that what it did, uh, let me turn this on too. So you can see this is line, so line plus points uh, will show you a data point every time the higher time frame bar closed. So 30 minute, every 30 minutes there will be a dot and that's the actual close. So this, this dot right here will line up exactly with the actual value while these this in the middle here isn't going to quite line up with these because it's uh, it's smoothing it to just make it visually more appealing so you can't adjust this with smoothing you can only adjust the visual with smoothing but you see how it got rid of those artifacts you see with that but if we scoot back here you can see where it was really rough right there it didn't get rid of whoops it didn't get rid of the uh, the roughness. Uh, this uh, the least favorite feature of Thinkorswim. They just cannot hold their chart still while loads data sets in. Uh, they need an absolute positioning, not relative positioning on this scroll bar. So you see that it keeps all that roughness in there. Because the whole point is to reduce the data destruction of the calculation because I, I don't want to lose that. Smoothing destroys data. Now, of course, you can just go right ahead and actually smooth it out with an averaging scheme and then come down and pick what type of averaging you want to do and it'll further smooth it and uh, you can do that if that's what you want to do. Then behind the, in the background, you can also do a secondary um, there. Now, now, the indicator that I typically use is the velocity on raw and I don't use line versus points you could do that um, and I'll put it onto a one minute chart and this is typically the one that if you're seeing me plot posting charts and stuff this is the one that I will post with and you can see it it saves all the data in between there um, for this this is this is let's see so this is the summation between two uh, exponential moving averages EMAs this is the first derivative this is the second derivative, and that's what's being plotted here. And it's from a 30-minute time frame, not a one-minute time frame. That's really important you understand. Uh, this is the 30-minute. Got that? Okay. Um, so this is the one that I plot. This is the setup I typically am using with this. Now the next thing that this is, so that's the first thing. Okay, so it's MTF time frames. So you're getting the higher time frame plotted accurately onto a lower time frame without any data destruction. The second thing that this indicator does is that oftentimes overnight you or pre-market you want to know what the values are going to be. So if you turn on 24 hours, you can see right here is the show extended trading session. Um, this chart right here that we're looking at is set to the advanced decline. So we're just going to look at the advanced decline. And if you want to comp uh, compare this, you can bring up the ADDC. Um, that's this one, New York Stock Exchange Composite. And then what it does is, let me zoom in a little so you can get an idea. When it's a solid color, whoops, when it's a solid color, this is intraday. Right? And when it's this like darker color, this is overnight, or th that's the Globex. And this is the regular trading hours RTS. And so that's the color scheme there. So you can see right now, overnight, we have the advanced decline doing this kind of thing. And you can track that um, here and here. So this advanced decline value, that's this one. So whatever it closed at. And that way you could say, oh my gosh, it's gone down, right? So you could s compare that really quickly, what these values are currently projected to be at. Now this is a model. Remember, it's just a model. It's not perfect. But it does a pretty good job. So, so right now we have the overnight values. 
these little white labels show up to show you the overnight uh, model. And you can see that currently the advanced decline is sort of moving down. And then you might even do something like take a look at price. You say, well, well, I don't need to explain that to you. Uh, we're not looking at strategies. We're, we're just looking at what the indicator does. And that's useful because it gives you a heads up about what your momentum numbers are going to look like at the open. And again, you can come in and you can smooth it if you'd like to. Um, personally, overnight, I only really like using the, the advanced decline or the st stat advanced decline. Um, I don't plot the other values because I can just look at them and get a pretty good idea of what they are. Um, I think it's more useful to look at these numbers because you can see. Now, the last thing, okay, so we've it does multi-time frame, it does 24-hour momentum numbers, and the last thing that it does that I really like is the statistical advanced decline. Let me turn that on. A statistical advanced decline is kind of a confusing tool. So what it's going to do is if if we have this as like this is low and this is high and you're saying well, where is the market right now um, with respect to you know everything that we can pull in about momentum and that's really what the stat idea is it it's giving us some low to high value like that and then it's taking this value and putting it into um, advanced decline terms. So what you're used to with the advanced decline number. So you come down here and you see it's like 3,000 down to negative 3,000. So these are, this is with respect to what you're used to with the advanced decline is what's happening. And I think this is really does a great job of telling you where we are. So you can see right now we're right here. Um, and I would take this to be sort of near zero. It's So it's saying what's What's the statistical position of the market? Um, and it, it moves similar to the advanced decline, but it's not exactly the same. Now there are markers that show up on the statistical advanced decline, and it's really important that you know which way the market's trending on a longer term time frame. Okay, so when you pull up the statistical advanced decline, you get these numbers, which are the hard boundaries for uh, limits. And when you get the market get right up close to the upside and you know it's trending down, you're going to get great signals, but you're not going to on this side. So it was downtrending and this is a uh, important, but if the market's trending up and you know that it's not trending down, then you're going to get a little bit better swing signals. Uh is you have to know which way the market is trending overall. Um, and that's true for a lot of oscillators. Uh, so that's how the statistical advanced decline works. Um, these are the settings. Hopefully that was helpful to cover the basics of what the indicator has in the settings and what you can do with it. Um, if I haven't covered something or you want a better explanation, just shoot me a message, get a hold of me, ask questions. Good luck trading.